All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin, and I'd like to welcome you all to our latest Novich webinar series episode. Uh, today, we are partnering with architect and Vectorworks guru, Jonathan Pickup, to discuss the all-new Vectorworks Architect 2014. Um, building information modeling is a huge topic, particularly in the UK, where by 2016, all government projects will require it in some form. Uh, in today's presentation, Jonathan demonstrates with a simple project how quickly one can draw a two-story building that's BIM capable with walls and furniture to create building plans, uh, sections, and elevations. Uh, many of these concepts are possible with older versions. However, let Jonathan show you what current tweaks and enhancements in Vectorworks 2014 can do to make your workflow even faster than before. Uh, and for those of you who don't know who Jonathan Pickup is, uh, Jonathan Pickup is an architect trained in New Zealand and in the UK with more than 30 years of experience. Uh, he has been writing and producing Vectorworks manuals and providing customer support for more than 15 years. Uh, his company, ArconCAD, is the premier provider of third-party manuals and training resources for Vectorworks. Uh, he also runs the Vectorworks online user group and provides its main direction. Uh, today's presentation is about 40 minutes long, and afterwards we'll have a brief Q&A where Jonathan will answer your questions live. Uh, feel free to submit your own to us at any time into the chat window below. Uh, but before we get going with today's presentation, here's an overview of what we do at Novich. The Novich webinar series is brought to you by Novich.com. As one of the largest online design software stores, we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Uh, if you are interested in purchasing Vectorworks Architect 2014, it is available in the United States from us at Novich with free shipping. Uh, I also do want to mention that the fifth edition of Jonathan Pickup's highly recommended guide, Vectorworks Architect Tutorial Manual, is available from Novich as well. Uh, to learn about this and the rest of our Vectorworks catalog, you are welcome to call and speak with our sales specialist, Bob Thayer. Uh, you can reach him by his email address, bob at novich.com. And to get a glimpse of who is changing the world of design one step at a time, um, please visit Novich's very own blog. Uh, every week our interviews shine a light on those innovators whose work break out from the norm. I do want to mention um, that answers from your webinar questions will be shared here as well. So for more details, please visit us at blog.novich.com. And secondly, we are working hard to revamp our online community for Vectorworks users. Uh, at Vectorworking, uh, catch up on all the latest design discussions and events. Share your war stories and get help from like-minded professionals. Uh, we want to hear your thoughts, so please check us out today at vectorworking.com. Uh, coming up next week, uh, Maxwell Render expert Mihai Iyuta draws the curtains to reveal details on the much-anticipated Maxwell Render V3. Uh, together, we'll walk you through the advancements and discuss in detail the numerous new improvements and features to be found in this upcoming release. The webinar is free and will last about an hour, including the Q&A. So if you want to sign up for this free event, head on over to novich.com forward slash webinar forward slash 91. And last but not least, uh, if you have to leave early, no worries. Uh, today's webinar is being recorded. If you want to rewatch this episode, it is in its entirety. As always, you can find it on our Novich webinar series channel through Neil and YouTube. Uh, with that said, Jonathan, are you ready? I'm ready. Cool. All right. Um, I will make you the presenter right about now. Cool. Take it away. Enjoy, guys. All right. Can you see my screen? Yep. Good to go. Okay. So I teach a lot of people, and quite often what comes up is people say, well, you know, like I'm used to 2D drawing, or I'm, I'm more familiar with 2D, and, and does that 3D really, you know, is it really going to help me? And there's a lot of talk these days about BIM, building information modeling. And what is it? The Vector Architect that Kevin talked about, it doesn't say that this is a BIM manual, but it actually uses all of the principles. So today what I'd like to do is I'd like to use those principles, drawing, setting up your file, creating uh, three-dimensional information, extracting data from things, and creating elevations and sections. So I'm going to look at that. I'm going to start by setting up my file. Now, before we get started, I've removed my user folder from, from my normal Vectorworks, so hopefully what you'll see is a standard, out-of-the-box Vectorworks. The idea of doing that is that I, I've got a lot of um, library information that I've added over the years, wall styles that help me out, class names that really speed me up, and I wanted to show you that even if you don't have those things, how quick it could be. Now, of course, when you do some setup in Vectorworks and you do create your own libraries and you create your own layer names and your own classes, it is so much quicker. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to start by setting up my layers and not my classes, but I'll set up my stories and my layers. Vectorworks uh, 2012, I think, introduced the concept of stories. 
And so I'm going to use my stories. I'm going to change my default layers because I don't like having my floor always start 100 millimeters above the ground. I'm going to use uh, metric where I can. I'll give you my imperial uh, heights. So that's about eight feet high. And that's going to fix my floor always. It's always going to be a zero now. So when I create my stories, I won't have to come back and adjust some of those things. So what I want to do is I want to create a lower floor that's got a foundation and a floor. Now you don't always have to use a foundation. In fact, although even though I create a foundation layer in this uh, demonstration, you can get away without using it. If it's a simple project, you can actually put it on a class instead of using an, another layer. Let's create another story. This one's going to have a floor and a roof. So I've really only created three design layers, that one and the, so the lower floor, the upper floor, and the roof. I don't need this design layer anymore, so I can delete it. One of the strategies, of course, is that you should keep the organization of Vectorworks as simple as possible. So don't use layers just because you can. Don't create extra classes just because you can. I've now created my layers, and now I'm going to draw my walls. Before I start, I need to think about the construction of my walls. What do I want to show? Because what I'd quite like to have is I'd quite like to have the cladding shown. Now, where I come from, we, we tend to put cladding on a ventilated cavity, and then we've got a, a timber frame, maybe, or a structural frame, and then I'm going to put the internal lining as well. And I'm going to build all those components up. So the first is going to be my cladding. What thickness is it? It's about an inch and a half, 31 millimeters. And I'm going to create a new class for this. So I'm not going to use anything that I've, I've created already, because I, normally I have my classes here, and I just import them. So this is going to be wall-component-cladding. Now I'm going to reuse this name quite a lot, so I'm just going to copy it using a keyboard shortcut. So offset from wall top, that's going to be fine. Offset from wall bottom. So let's make that minus 2 inches or minus 50 millimeters. So it puts my siding or my weatherboards below my slab. I could at that point, if I wanted to, I don't know if you saw it, but I could assign a texture to that as well. So the next one is my cavity. I want to create a cavity about 19 millimeters, 3 quarters of an inch. I need a new class for this. And this is cavity. And you can see I just used my keyboard shortcut to speed up the creation of that. Use class, use class, use class. And here you could actually assign a texture. Another new one, this is my frame. This is about 4 inches, 90 millimeters. I need a class for that. So let's create a new class. And this is my frame class. And finally, I want to create a lining. I need a class for that. It's about half an inch, 13 millimeters. New class for that, lining. And I'll set my classes as well. So that's my wall. So when I draw, it will draw those components. If I have a look at my classes, though, it's um, maybe I should zoom in so you can see the difference. So let's just edit some of those classes. Most of them I'm going to leave as they are, but this one, I'm going to change this to be a pattern so that I can change the graphic quality of it. Now, I've said use it creation, so that will now use as creation. It'll use that graphic style. I can also set the line weight if I like, so I can improve the quality of my, my graphic presentation. You can see by turning on my zoom line thickness, you can see that the walls have got a, a thickness to them. And the, and the fill is now grayed in. Now, when I draw my wall, I have the ability to draw on the top of the wall. It's called the left control line. If I hit the U key on my keyboard, I'm now drawing on the center line. And now I'm drawing on the uh, right edge. Now, the challenge with this is that it's the left edge of my siding, of my cladding or it's the center of my entire wall. But that's not quite what I want. I'd rather like to use this method, where it just works with the core of the wall. Now, I think I forgot to set the core, so let's go back and set that. 
my framing is the core of my wall. Actually, since I've done so much work to this, why not save this as a, as a wall style? So I'm going to use 31, 19, 90, and 13, and this is an X wall. And the code numbers that I use just give me the exact dimensions for my components. It makes it really easy for me to see my wall separate from other ones. So it's saved as a wall preference. I've created a core wall. Now what you should notice is that those buttons at the top, the, the different modes, so drawing on the right side is the right side of my core of my wall. In other words, it's the right side of my framing. That's the left side of my framing. So that's going to make it easy for me to draw my building to the framing dimensions, not to the cladding dimensions. Now I could be really careful with this, and I could make this 3.5M, enter. Let me just check as a preference, I think that I haven't set yet. I thought I'd set everything, so let's just go back to this and that one. Allow numeric keypad entry for instant data bar activation. So now I should just be able to type in 3500 and it goes straight to the data bar, hit the tab key once, hit it once more. Now I can come down here, 1500, enter, enter, come across, 4 meters, enter, enter. And so it's just a quick way of drawing. And I want to line up with that point there. And there are all my walls. Now depending on the settings that you set for your walls, you can now control what class those walls are on here. You can control the height of the walls. So if we go back and look at our wall style, and we should see a change when I've when I've gone through this. When we create our wall style, we can also go to our insertion options and talk about how's this wall going to be fit into this, into this layer relative to the other things. So maybe what I need has an offset of zero here and say to Vectorworks, when you use this wall, set this wall to the finished floor of the story above. So it will actually use my layer settings, my story heights, and it'll fix the top of that wall to match my finished floor. That, that's the, the height of the floor above. I can also create a class here so that whenever I use this wall, it automatically goes on to a specific class. Let's save those preferences a wall style. Let's replace the old one. And now I get a choice about re wall replacement. What do I want to replace? Well, they're the same sizes, so I don't need to worry about it. But you could, if you needed to, say I want to set the, uh, the right, that is the internal size of the rooms, matches the right side of that one. So even if the wall was a different size, I wouldn't be affecting the internal room sizes. Now you might have noticed in the background, the walls actually just changed. They changed because they're now connected to the uh, settings that I've just used. They should have changed their class, as they have here. They've changed their bounding. And now those walls are fixed to the upper floor. What happens if I change my stories? I'm just going to try and move this out of the way. I can't make that much skinnier. Uh, where can I put it there? Maybe you can see the walls change here. So let's go to stories. Let's edit my story height. Clients come back to me. They need the story to be a bit higher, so they're going to make it about 10 feet, about 3 meters. Let's move the story and all the stories above it. So if it's a two-story building, what does it matter? But if it's a multi-story building, Make sure you choose this, and all the stories above this will also be moved automatically. And you may have noticed the walls just changed just a slight bit, so I'm just going to undo and redo. So the walls are now connected completely to the settings of my stories, making it really quick. I'm using some keyboard shortcuts on my keyboard to change views. That's the numeric keypad. Uh, key number five is a top view, key number one is a left isometric. So now we can put a door in. Put a door there. If I get time, I'd like to put a balcony out here. I'm not sure if I will. I'm just going to put a door there, and I'm going to create that door a bit wider. It's going to make about 1,700 wide. Leave its height the way it is. Now if we have a look down here, we should have the ability to, let's put that on a schedule so we can then count it up. We can put a hexagon 
label to it. We can keep the ID horizontal, and we can also show the tag in 3D, and there it is now in 3D. So that's about 1700 divided by 2. This is going to locate my tag, and you can see my tags just moved to the center of the window. Uh, my jam, ID, tag, and I'm looking for the leaf. So the leaf wants to be glazed. And let's change the thickness, the top rail height, the bottom rail height, uh, and the bottom rail, let's make that about 300. Now it's still one big door. So let's make a double leaf. Now it's two doors. There are some bifold doors. Uh, bifold double, but you don't get an opportunity to have where they swing, which which ones are all connected together. So I've done quite a lot of work on that door. I could make this door the same. It won't fit, of course. So let's uh, select that door, and uh, that needs to be a bit skinnier than that. We want that on the schedule as well. That wants to be 02. And keep horizontal, show tag in 3D. And it's going to have a hex skin again. And it's going to be glazed. And I'll put in the same sizes. Now, the, there is an opportunity, I guess, to use the eyedropper tool to suck up the attributes from one and put it onto the other. But this door is now much wider, so I'd end up with a very wide door there. So I'm just going to go through and make the changes. I think that's all I needed to change. And the ID label, so that's 860 divided by 2. Gets it in the middle, I hope. How about some windows? So let's put some windows in. I'm going to put a window here. And then I'm going to make some changes to that window. So I want this window to be a bit narrower. I want it to be not quite as high as that, but the head is fine where it is. If I put another window in, the changes that I made to the first window aren't accepted or aren't set as the preferences. So is there a quick way to do that? Well, if you right click on an object, there's a create, create similar object concept in Vectorworks. And this create similar object concept, it's not new in Vectorworks 2014. Um, but it is really quick. And what it does is it picks up whatever attributes you've got here on this object, and it sets the tool to match those attributes. Let's go back to a plan view and just have a look at it. Uh, I want those doors to open out, actually. I want the doors to open out. I want that ID tag to be out here. So you just click on it, click again, and that sets the location. And the opening angle is 90 at the moment. I want to change that. That's better. So the right click, create some object. I've now got a, I'll soon have the door. But here's the warning. Did you know that there's a keyboard shortcut to do this? And here it is on a, on a Macintosh, it's Option plus Command. On a Windows machine, it's Control plus Alt. So now I have exactly the same door. So now I can put that door in. If I do the same on this door, so it's Option plus Command on a Macintosh, I've got that door. So I could put another one of those doors in. Uh, maybe I prefer to have that door over here and get rid of that one. And I just need to flip that door. Move it where I want it and so on. How about some furniture? Let's put in some cabinetry. So I'm going to go to the furniture settings. You have furniture. We've got a seating layout. Don't want to use that table and chairs. We'll just put one of those in. Double click to place it. There's lots of choices I can make with classes. I don't want to worry about them just at the moment. I want to put in a base cabinet. My base cabinet's not the size I want. I want that to be 600. If I, it's an uneven corner, I can change that size. The height, 910. The depth, 595. And I can also assign classes to these parts of the cabinet. 
when I'm working on my own Vectorworks and I'm using my own user folder, I have a lot of classes that I easily assign to these. I don't want to spend too much time changing the assignment of those, so I'm just going to leave them on the classes that they are. Okay, let's change these reveals, so 10 there, 5 there, number of shells 1, the kick height 150, the depth 50. So I'm using, I'm using metric settings here, I'm just using my favourite settings. I've gone through these several times, I know what I like to use. 6 inches for the splash height, 3 quarter of an inch for the thickness of it, 40 mils for the countertop, and so on. So that gives me one cabinet. So if I zoom in, just watch out when I place that near a wall, it's being sucked into the wall, but I can turn that off so that it doesn't drag itself into the wall. There's my first object, and if I need several of these, I can use my move by points command. Move by points tool. So I'm going to keep the original. How many duplicates do I want? I want about four or five. So starting there, finishing there, and there are my units. So when I start to look at this in 3D, it's starting to get a kitchen, it's got a little bit of furniture in it. There are some uh, some great libraries with some uh, Charles Eames furniture you can put in here. Uh, you just need to download those off the VSS website. So it's starting to develop. I need to put in a stair. That's going to make this door a bit redundant because you'll see where the stair goes. And the stair can then be connected to the stories so that I can tell the stair to start on the lower floor, finish on the upper floor. If I change any of the settings for the stories, the stair will either grow or shrink. So let's just grab a stair. Now that I could spend the whole session looking at the stair. It is a um, very competent stair. There's a lot of choices here. I just want to choose a simple L-shaped stair. And let's uh, replace the one in the document. So that's a stair. I've got loads of choices. I can turn handrails off left and right. I don't want to get into that because um, I just want to use a real simple, we'll keep this flowing. But I do want to set my general geometry to use my layer elevation. So the top bound is the story above and the bottom bound is this particular layer with an offset of zero. If you leave the top offset of three meters, the stair will end up being six meters high. And construction, I'm just going to set the lower floor thickness to zero. So there's my stair. Place it temporarily, because then I want to zoom in and move it into that corner. And if you do, this is the insertion wall mode, turn it off, otherwise your stair will accidentally jump into the wall. I'm just going to use my Z or my Z key, so it's a temporary zoom. And you can see I uh, haven't got much room to turn my stair, so I need to move that wall out. So back to my settings. Double click on the stair to bring up your settings. What I need to know is what's it going to look like, my 2D graphics. Lower floor, great. I've got the display here, but nothing on the upper floor. I need to turn the upper floor on, otherwise I won't see it on my floor too. So the stair display is going to be a break with the dashed above, and this one is a break with dashed above, this one's dashed below. That's good. And there's lots of settings here, and you can save your settings so you can reuse them again and again. Now what we should find when I go upstairs, let's go layer options active only, and let's go to the upper floor, there's just the stair. Now I'm using a keyboard shortcut to change between levels, because I just find that quicker than using the navigation palette. That's my navigation palette, I could easily tick there, or tick there, but there's a keyboard shortcut which on a Macintosh is the command plus the up arrow key, and I just find that uh, pretty convenient. Now I want to copy everything that I've got on this floor, and I want to copy it to the floor above. I've got my stair selected. What I want to copy is everything but my stair. So if my stair is selected, and then I invert my selection, I should be selecting everything else. So copy it. Go to the floor above. I've used a keyboard shortcut to copy it. I could have used 
copy. There's my keyboard shortcut. Now I'm going to go paste in place. And so I've now got a copy of all that information. Obviously that door's not going to be suitable and I don't need this furniture in here anymore. So what have I what have I started to get here? Let's just have a look. Let's make my layer options show stamp modify others. I can now see both floors and I can see my stair. Now my upper floors are not yet, if I just go to active only, we think we'll find that the upper floors are actually very narrow, very they, they haven't got very much height because they're set to be bound to the floor above. But there is no floor above. So what's VectorWorks going to do? VectorWorks is going to not know what to do, so it creates the floors with no height. Ideally what I want to do is to create a roof and then have these fit themselves to the roof. Select similar tool. What are my settings? Let's just create some. So I could save object type. So let's save that. Object. Sometimes I want to use object and layer. Object and class, I should say. So let's set that to be object and class. And sometimes I want to just use the class only. So let's just save that as well. And this is just the class. So having set those options, I can now access them from this pop-down menu. So I'm just going to choose things on the same class, choose things of the same object type, choose the things that are the same object type and class. So that will pick all my walls. It won't pick any walls that are not on the same class. And it's going to allow me to do things like create a roof. So let's create a roof from that. It's going to be a vertical roof. I think this 140, bearing height is zero. Let's make it 30 degrees. We shall make it quite low. Bearing height, uh, we're going to make this just over eight feet, two and a half meters. The two foot eave overhang and assign it to our roof layer. There it is. It's not really the design that I like. I would have preferred that one to be a gable and this one to be a gable and maybe this one as well and maybe that one. Now one of the new things in Vector 2014 is the ability to say I want no wall on that gable only or on this gable I want to hide the wall as well. I didn't think that was going to be very much use to me, except I realized that these other walls are actually very tricky to create. Whereas um, doing it this way, it's a, it's a lot cleaner. So what we need to do is we need to select those walls and we need to project those walls up till they hit the roof. AC, fit walls to objects, constrain them to the roof above. So now what I've done is I've uh, sent all my walls up, they now fit the roof above and I should now be able to start turning on my other, uh, my other parts. I can look at this in an OpenGL rendering mode. I tend to use quite a high quality now and medium quality shadows and let's have a look at that. This is the new rendering style in VectorWorks 2014, the new hidden line rendering style. And it's quite powerful, it's very quick. It's much quicker than previous versions of VectorWorks. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to look at the, the way the sun falls. So I'm going to choose a heliodon, put in a heliodon, and let's pretend we're in San Francisco. And that should set the light from that side. And we can also change the time of the day. So if we go back to a rendered view, let's choose OpenGL rendering, we can see the way the light falls at that time of the day. So if I change the time of the day, let's make it 12 o'clock. I think in 2013 they introduced the ability to type in times, like lunch, or is it dawn? 
midday, I think you can type in not lunch. I wouldn't know what that is. So midday, dawn, I think you can type in. And you can type in dusk, and it sets the time. So let's make this 1300, which is 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So you can see at this time of the day, quite strongly with the sun on it. And this gives you the opportunity, of course, to start looking and saying, well, wait a minute, at that time of the day, do I need to extend that roof out to give myself some more shadow, to, to give myself some more shade? Because at that time of the year, am I going to overheat my room? I want to create a balcony. So I'm going to go back to my wall tool. I'm going to change my insertion options to fix the height. So this is going to use my layer elevation. I want a height of about 1200. But I want the bottom offset to also go below. So it needs to go deep enough to contain my slab. So let's make that 200. That should be fine. And now I can draw a wall from here coming out. Uh, let's make sure I'm snapping to the right object. Now if it is easier, let's just make sure we're on the active only layer. I'm just not sure what it's snapping to at that point there. There's a, a preference that I should be using in Vectorworks. Okay, I thought I was using it. I'm going to go back to a plane view. It's obviously snapping to something I didn't want it to snap to, so I'm going to draw my balcony out here. And if we look at that in the 3D view, we should find that it's got the correct height, that it's fixed to its height. And, oh, I think I know what I've done wrong. I've got my mathematics all back to front. Minus 200, that's what I should have done. No wonder it looked funny. It was actually snapping 200 mils up. So now I've got my balcony. My overall height needs to be 1,200, because so I want it to finish about a, a meter above. And so that's now going to create some shading for the floor below. And it's also going to um, be something for this floor to come out onto. It's probably time I made some slabs. So I'm going to create a foundation slab here. I'm going to create a, um, a foundation which is very uh, common here where I come from. And it's a, uh, a rather deep concrete slab with polystyrene pods and ribs in it. So the first part is going to be my topping. And that needs a class. should really call it structural. Dash slab, dash topping. Okay, I'm going to copy some of this again because I'm going to reuse most of these words again. So let's just copy those. So use class, use class. And where's it going to finish? So the thickness of this is 85 millimeters. And it's going to finish on the outer face of the wall core. So in other words, it's going to look at my wall components. It's not going to go to the outside of my cladding. It's not going to go to the outside of my cavity. It's going to find the core, my structural frame. It's going to stop there, which is quite cool. We have another one here, which is my structural part, my foundation part. New class for that. Foundation. Thickness, 205. Out of piece of wall core again. Use class, use class. OK. If you're going to reuse this, save it as a preference. So how does this work? We've got a couple of choices. One of them, you pick the walls that are going to create the boundary for your slab. And then you hit the Enter key, and it creates the slab. So if I zoom in, you should be able to see that the walls, there's my framing part of my wall, my slab stops in line with that, and my cladding goes below the slab. 
But why auto bound the slab? Why auto bound the slabs? If I move that wall out, you notice the slab automatically goes out as well. So the slabs are connected to the walls. If I make, if I redesign the walls, the slabs will update. I have to move the wall, not the slab, of course. Now the slabs are at the front at the moment, so I need to send that to the back because graphically the slabs at the front. So right click, send, and send to back. So we've done quite a lot of work so far, but we haven't done anything in the way of drawings. So I'm going to set my page up. And now I'm going to create some drawings. I guess what I'd like to have is a plan and maybe a couple of elevations to start with, just to show you how these are connected together. Create multiple viewports has been around for a little while, but in VectorWorks 2013 they made it a lot easier to find. So in VectorWorks 2014 we can use create multiple viewports. Let's make it 1 to 100 scale. Let's do a top, front, and a right view. And I'm going to set that one to a top plan view. Those are my elevations. And what I do need to check with my elevations, do they have all the layers that I want? Well, they didn't, so let's turn those on. Do they have all the classes that I want? Just make sure, and as you add classes, you've got a choice of whether these classes are automatically made visible in these viewports or not. If you choose not to, you've got to come back and check them. So there are my elevations starting to take shape. There's my first plan. Let me drag a copy of that plan across, because what I'd quite like to do is to make an upper floor plan. So that's my upper floor plan. I could show the roof, or I could show the roof in grey. But there's probably a better way than that. Let's show the roof solid. And I want to go back and change the roof, but before I do that, I want to make sure that my roof is using classes. So make all attributes by class, so the classes are controlling everything about that roof. And the reason I want to do that is that when I get to this point here and I say, okay, let's have a look at the classes on my viewport, what should we do with my roof? Let's edit that and make sure it's got no solid fill and then it's got a grey line. Maybe even give it a line type which is dashed. Now that roof outline is live to the model. If I make any changes to that roof outline, this will update. Decided I quite like a mono pitch roof, so I'm going to go back to my roof and make some changes to it. Just using my keyboard shortcut again to uh, key number one. So what am I going to do? What happens if I make that one a gable? What does it do? Let's turn off the show wall. And I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to turn off all my walls off everything. So I've gotten rid of that part. Let's change. Oops, Jonathan, I think you're breaking up a little bit. There was a bit of static in the microphone. Mm. Try again. Okay. Oh, you're breaking up. Is it the fridge? No. How about now, Kevin? Uh, I still hear it a bit. Um, does anybody else hear this? I think, I think it's still there. Yeah, okay. Still there? Still there? Yes, yes. Okay. For everybody, you might want to lower the volume until we fix this. Let's How about that, Kevin? Is that better? Uh, give it one more try. Like that? Yes, better. I agree with Jorge okay. on this one. Cool. Carry on. Okay, so where was I? Oh, I was trying to make these into a into a gable. I don't want to see that. All right, let's turn all those off again. So it's nearly there. That's a gable. That's a gable. 
Let's make that one into a gable as well. And we won't show the wall. And then this one, I can change the angle of it. So I'm going to make that 8 degrees. So now I've got a, a mono pitch roof. But what's happened to my walls below? They're not automatically updated. I do have to select them and then do that fit walls to roof again. Be careful though, because of what I've done, I've selected my balcony walls, which I really don't want to go to the same height. So select those and then shift key and that wall, that wall and that one. If they were on different classes, of course, then I would be able to choose them uh, or, or filter them by their class. So fit walls to objects. Let's come back and have a look at my drawings. So these two viewports need updating. They've got the red border plus on Vectorworks 2014 the update button turns red. So they're now up to date with my model, which I think is a pretty fundamental part of the BIM, the whole BIM concept. That is, as we make changes to the model, we can then see the changes appearing here. I think what I'd like to do is to create a section, like a couple of sections, I'd like one through here and one through my stair. So I've selected my viewport, create section viewport. I'm going to start just outside here through that part there, and we're going to look in that direction. So I'm not going to look back at the building, I'm looking away from the building. So this is my stair section. What layers do we want to see? Better make sure we see all of them. What classes do we want to see? Well, we might have something on the ceiling class, better turn that on. Hidden line and advanced section properties. So it's limited by section line length. It's got a height, let's set that to minus 400 for a start height. The end height is I think about 7 meters, something like that. If I get it wrong, I can always make it a bit higher. And let's go OK. So there is my section. And I can take that line up with the bottom of that one. So now my section lines up. Now one of my advanced properties is the attributes and I can set that to be section style as a class and you'll see it's got a very deep red color, very thick lines. That's all controlled by a section which you can then edit. So section style here, I always think the line's a bit too fat and I prefer to have maybe a lighter gray color for that. Or if you prefer, you can make it a pattern. Black for the foreground, white for the background, and just give it a slight gray color. I see we're going to run out of time, Kevin, so I'm not going to get time to do any uh, another section, but let's do a bit of quick counting then. Tools reports, let's create a report, and what we want is a door report. I've got more doors than windows, I think, so I'm going to create a door report. What information do I want? Well, there's a lot of information I could get. I know I want to have the ID prefix. I want the ID label, so I'll know what the prefix of the door is, what the door number is. Um, I need to have, um, there's a lot of things I could get. So the leaf width, that's a read only, I can't edit it. I'm looking for something that will give me the overall thickness, maybe the overall width. Maybe we could do that. Let's do the, the leaf width is overall width. Now there's so many here. One of the quick ways I do is to get everything out and then delete all the ones I don't want, leaving behind just the ones that are important to me, and then save that as something that's um, useful. Save it as a a library item so that you can get access to it all the time. Even better, save it as part of your template file so that whenever you need it, it's really easy to get to. Let's try those two. Let's see if they do what I want. And I was actually looking for the, the hinge type or the, the jam type so that I could um, jam width, jam type. 
on schedule prefix. I was looking for something that would allow me to change the, the style of the door, like the leaf, the leaf style or something like that. Bottom rail width, how about we add that? Okay, so let's go back and have a look at one of these doors. Uh, there's this one, let's have a look at that item. Where is it? It's that door there, so let's look at that in 3D. It's that door there. So if, if this is all working, there's my prefix. There's my label, that's my width, that's my height, and that one should be the bottom rail. So it's that door 01, I forgot which one it was now, let's try changing this one. Which one was it? Let's go back to that select item, that's that one there. And we should be able to update that leaf width, or we should be able to update the bottom rail height. So information that's attached to that door, we should then be able to extract into our door report. We can select them, we can renumber them. For example, that should be probably 03. So it's changes on there. And we can do that kind of reporting with all the objects we've created. So if we wanted to create a wall report, we can certainly do that. And depending on how much information you attach to the doors, sorry, how much information you attach to the walls will depend on what you get back out of your report. So you could create a report with wall data, for example. So it would give us all the walls, it would give us the function, whether it's an exterior door, the R value, the acoustic value, whatever you assign to that wall, you will be able to extract as data. Well, I think if we want questions and answers, Kevin, it's probably time I stopped this and started to look at our questions and answers. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. I have a number of questions here. Um, it might be best. Okay. Let's start with Jeff. Uh, Jeff has a question um, at the very top right after the one I answered for San Sanhun. Uh, setting windows anywhere is easy. Uh, how best can you locate a window a given distance off a wall without placing a guideline? Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> um, as long as you set your window. So first of all, We've got an opportunity. That's the center of my window. My cursor's on the center of the window. Using these modes here, I've now set my insertion point to be the left side of the window. But you've also got this offset button here, offset insertion mode. It's been there for a long time. So what you do is you go click, that's my reference point. Click, that's my window. Click, how far do you want it? Let's make it 200. And there it is. Now, if something changes with the client, you can also use your set position button. Now, the set position button allows you to set a reference point and a point to measure to, and then you can say that should have been 300. And you can move the window uh, back that way. It's very, very quick. And if you use associative dimensioning, you should be able to edit that dimension and make it 450. No, it won't, it won't resolve. Oh, I must have done something wrong. But you should be able to set up your associative dimensioning so you can use that as well. Do you want to um, just make sure I'm uh, making, do you want to make sure I'm going through the questions in the right order, Kevin, or do you uh, want to control those? Um, sure. Uh, well, if, it's up to you because uh, you have the window open as well. Um, let me know if you see Gary, because right, so we're going top down from Jeff to Gary and then so forth. Let me know if you see that one. It's a, around 11.21 a.m. Uh, I could read it out loud. Please. <laughs> so Gary wants to know, um, although you are using the alternative command, uh, ALT command, ALT command to duplicate objects, would you not recommend using symbols? I probably would, Gary. I mean, it's it, that we could have a long discussion on whether I want to use um, whether I want to use uh, a standard vector X door or, or a, a window, um, and it depends, I think, Gary, on um, the way you've you know how much information you've got. Symbols are actually extremely useful because we could. Um, I haven't got the file open. 
but I've actually got a file where I've turned all my windows and doors into symbols, and then I've created elevations of those and created a sheet, a work, a, um, an elevation of all of my doors and windows where I've elevated every window, I've given a code for whether it's got an opening sash and all that kind of stuff, and that's a huge improvement. So Gary, the, the idea of today was really to show people who've never done 3D stuff just how quick it could possibly be, uh, and so I had to take some shortcuts and yeah, symbols would be a, a great way of uh, doing that stuff. Um, yeah, I've got lots of thoughts about it, Gary, but I'll keep some of them to myself. Cool. <laughs> um, Brian has a question. Uh, is the ability to cast shadows uh, now a standard option in VectorWorks 2014 Architect, or is RenderWorks still required to have this feature? No, it's not a standard option in, in VectorWorks Architect. You need RenderWorks to cast shadows. That was cool. That was pretty simple. So uh, I, just, I have VectorWorks Architect and I've got RenderWorks and, and you need RenderWorks to cast the shadows. I, I recommend it to everybody. The, the ability to do a solar study to improve the quality of your design. I know here it's a, a passive solar design is a big issue. How much sun comes in? Well, if you can't cast shadows, you can't tell. And the top is always facing north. <laughs> That's a rum right there. Um, Alex wants to know, in my experience, Vectorworks will usually eliminate that line between layers on the exterior unless something is wrong. Is there some setting that is off, or is this new hidden line rendering no longer eliminate on that line? Oh, there's something wrong. Um, the, the problem is that I've actually got my upper walls finishing um, 50 millimeters below the slab, and so there's a 50 millimeter line here. I didn't have time to fix it. But what I should really have is two wall styles. So you might remember on the downstairs, I set my exterior cladding to be 50 millimeters below or two inches below, and I never got back to fixing it for the upper floors. But if I fix those, then it should, uh, the line should disappear. Cool. So if I select all of those walls, uh, I better not use that option, but if I select those walls and edit the components of those, um, which I'm going to have to convert those to unstyled walls. Ideally, I should have a different style for the upper floor. That's what I should really have. Uh, not the lining, the cladding. It's this minus 50. If I set that back to zero, that should um, get rid of that line. Please be aware that I used um, quite a few, uh, uh, what would you call them, uh, quick and dirty techniques maybe. Um, to do this, where if I'm using my real library with my real user folder, I've got a whole lot of these wall styles already set up ready to go. And it just saves so much time. You can just grab a wall style you've already made, you know it's for the lower floor, you know it's for the upper floor, it gets rid of all those little issues and it just speeds you up enormously. Okay, let's see. Um... Someone asked, oh Gary asked, mm -hmm. Well, Gary noted that I didn't use the slab from stories. Any particular reason? Um, I don't want to have too many layers, Gary. I'd rather use a class to control the slab if it's easy, but if it's not easy, then certainly create another layer for it. Just because you can create an unlimited number of layers and classes in VectorWorks doesn't mean it's a good idea. My aim is to keep it as simple as possible. So if it's simple to use a class to control the slab, use a class. I'm sorry, Jeff, I didn't get around to drawing uh, the floor framing thickness, trusses and joists. Um, I've run out of time, but yeah, they're very quick to do. If I had a, uh, I need to create the floor slab for the intermediate floor level, but then there's a command called create joist from poly. It would have just put all the joists in for me, and I could choose a range of, uh, of um, joist sizes. And I've even got some of my own custom sized ones for uh, products that are available here, which are manufactured joists some that have got metal middles and some that have got plywood beams, uh, so you can you can do quite a lot of that stuff. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Um, there is one from Neil. Uh, shout out to Neil for that awesome uh, best of blog post at Vector Working. Um, yes. Have you, uh, well, let's see. Have you covered this one? Uh, I'm guessing that Jonathan will get it now that he's creating drawing sheets. Uh, Jonathan. What do you think about that question? 
Well, I kind of, it depends what you call a door schedule. Some people um, like to have a, um, an elevation of all the doors. I didn't get around to doing that. I'm sorry, Neil. Um, hopefully the, um, the, um, the door report that I made, some people call that a door schedule as well. So maybe the door report, um, Neil will answer your question. Neil's one of my subscribers. He comes to my, um, I run sessions like this one uh, on a monthly basis. It's called my um, Building Information Model Special Interest Group or my VectorWorks Architect Special Interest Group. And so we have sessions like this which are a question and answer session every month where we go through topics like this, finding out you know, what's the best way to make doors and windows, is it better to use symbols, is it better to use wall styles, how do we deal with a complex roof. I mean, every month we do something different and I record those sessions. And so subscribers to my website, um, arconcad.com, they get the ability to go back over those movies and watch them as many times as they want. And they also get the ability, of course, to attend live webinars where I do unmute all the microphones and it's live question and answer time. Cool. I, you know, okay, how about this, Jonathan? Let's answer maybe two more questions and then I, I really want to get into the um, uh, talking about what you do um, outside of these webinars, uh, especially at learn.archoncat.com. So let's, uh, let's, go to, um, let's go to Fernando. Uh, what would you consider to be the best way to define classes and layers? Um, I've done, I've written quite a lot about when to use layers and when to use classes. They're not interchangeable. And if you understand what their intention is, like what's a layer for and what's a class for, I think it'll remove a lot of confusion. So for example, layers are a container. They contain more than one type of object. So if we go back and look at floor one, all of this information is on one layer. So think of a layer as like a container containing all the information that makes up this part of the building. So it's got uh, classes for the cabinetry, classes for the, the tables and chairs, classes for the windows, classes for the stairs, it's got doors and windows, it's got classes for the slabs. So layers are where things are. They're a container that contains that part of the building. Classes, on the other hand, are an attribute you assign to objects and you use classes to control visibility, to control graphic style, or to control things for reporting. So that's a, in a nutshell, that's how I define what's a layer for and what's a class for. So being able to, once you understand that a layer is a container and you put everything in it, I think then you stop thinking about, oh, should I use a class for that or should I use a layer for that? Now if you go back to my uh, earlier thing that I was talking with, with Gary about the slab idea, well, it's simple for me to put this slab on its own independent class. This is class that controls the slab. Why not use a layer? Well, making a layer might make it just too complicated. Um, whereas, um, if it was a complex plan with lots of changes in the slab, then maybe it would be better to put, um, and maybe if I had foundation walls underneath it which had some complexity to them, then it would be better to put all those into one layer. So separating that information. But again, the layer is still a container. You're still putting more than one thing in it. But where there's only one thing, it seems odd to me to have a layer just to contain a slab. Cool. Okay. So I, we do have a number of questions um, outside. Uh, we, we, do have number, we can't answer all of them, but what I'll do is I'll forward and format the questions to Jonathan, and I'll make sure that we share it as a blog post. Uh, okay. So what is your website to become a subscriber? You're probably referring to learn.archoncat, right, Jeff? Uh, I will get to that in just a bit. Um, so, Jonathan, I'll, I think I'll transition back to me. And then from there, uh, I do want to share more information about um, NoVeg and also learn.archoncat. So let's do this. Cool. Jonathan, are you ready? Cool. Yep. Cool. I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. So, uh, yes. Um, Thank you for joining us. Um, it's been awesome. Uh, I'm speechless because uh, I think we've had one of the highest uh, attendee attendance ratings ever. So Jonathan has just put a spell on everybody. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if you guys want to pick up a version of VectorWorks Spotlight, oh, no, not actually, VectorWorks Architect and RenderWorks 2014, uh, you can find it at novich.com. Uh, 
we carry it and we uh, it's available in the US from us uh, we have free shipping and it's there's zero sales tax so if you guys want to check it out um, I also want to recommend you guys everybody check out VectorWorks architect tutorial manual it's currently at the fifth edition but of course um, with the new release uh, 2014 a new one might come out sooner or later uh, but yeah do check it out uh, at novich.com um, if you guys want to check out our VectorWorks catalog you are more than welcome to email our sales specialist Bob there uh, you can reach him at his email address, bob at nobitch.com. And I got a snapshot of this right here. Uh, Jonathan, um, do you have any words about um, uh, Learn that Archon CAD that you want to talk about a bit, bit more to promote it as well? I d well, I, d I noticed I, as some of the questions were from my subscribers, and they're probably going to tell you, um, if they had an opportunity, you know, what they get from it. But the... The idea is that every month you get a new PDF manual based on topics that we kind of agree. And there's so, currently there's something in the order of 70 or 80 manuals that you can download. And these manuals range from 40 pages to 90 pages. They cover things like how to deal with a complex roof, how to deal with rendering or lighting. Um, I write one every year on what's the best things out of the new version of Vectorworks. Each of those manuals has movies attached to it. And I think I was telling you the other day privately, Kevin, that I've now reached 990 movies attached to those manuals. So next month I'm going to hit 1,000 of those movies. It's easy to find those movies because they're attached to the manual. But as well as that, it's this, um, this regular session that we attend, these regular meetings where I, I run a session like I've just done for my subscribers. It's question and answer, so you can stop me in the middle of the flow sometimes if it's appropriate. And the idea is to make sure that people are getting the best out of Vectorworks. As we learn more, we, we learn that Vectorworks is more able to do things. So it's a really good idea to keep coming. I've got, uh, I noticed that one of my subscribers is, um, is online. And one of the things that he said to me is, Jonathan, it's not about learning Vectorworks. It's about staying current. Vectorworks keeps changing. The ballpark keeps moving. We've got to keep our knowledge current. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate his feedback on that because that was what the whole purpose of it was. As I learn more about Vectorworks and I try to show more, so, so I learn from other people sometimes. And then we can all share that information. And it's really a, a good principle, I think. You know, like Gary had some questions. It's really good to see the way other people are doing stuff. Um, and I then work like a facilitator or... Um, you know, a chairman, you know, bring in someone's question in, let's try it out, let's see if that works. So what does everyone think about that? And we did that when we were doing window elevations where some other people had different ideas, so we actually tried them live. It's now recorded as a movie, you can go back and watch it. So we go through all of the options and people can see what suits them best. I actually think that, you know, I've heard some people say that it should be free or that the price might be too high. I think that if you attend the meetings and you attend the sessions, you actually get good value for money. Awesome. So in that case, uh, highly recommended. Um, tons of you guys feel the same way. If you are new to or, or you don't know about learn.argoncat.com, I encourage you guys to check it out. Uh, it's a great way to be part of a community of like-minded professionals and users as well. So which brings us to another community, which is at vectorworking.com. Uh, we've been working hard to revamp this uh, to be more engaging. Uh, this is a great way, uh, an alternative, if you will, um, another option to discuss and learn more about what's going on uh, in the world of Vectorworks. Uh, whether you're a landscape or a lighting designer or architect, this is a great place to check out as well. And I do want to mention that the address for uh, the webinar questions that will come up uh, when they do come up is at blog.novich.com. Uh, every week we share uh, blog posts and we interviews with innovators, uh, designers who are making headway, making major changes uh, in the way that they work and the way that they do their thing. Uh, but So if you guys want to check it out, head on over to blog.novich.com. I encourage you guys to do that. Uh, in our next upcoming webinar next week, uh, we'll be my Maxwell Render expert Mihai Iyuta draws the curtains to reveal details on the much anticipated Maxwell Render V3. Uh, if this is something you guys want to check out, Head on over to novich.com forward slash webinar forward slash 91. Uh, if you have questions, comments, or feedback, uh, you can, you're more than welcome to email me at kevin at novich.com as well. So, yep. And definitely by the end of today, uh, we'll upload the webinar recording to our channels on both vimeo.com slash novich and youtube.com slash novich. Uh, so if you haven't, please check it out. Like and subscribe to get the latest updates as well. 
Um, on behalf of the team at Novej, I want to thank you for joining us. Jonathan, uh, do you have any last words before we sign off on this presentation today? I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Um, it's, it, it's really encouraging for me to know that people want to hear um, and see what I've got to show them. So thanks, everyone, for coming. Cool. And um, Jonathan, if you haven't had breakfast yet, I encourage you to get some. <laughs> Cool. I've had my cup of tea, thanks. <laughs> All right, follow us at NoVeg as well on Twitter. All right, thank you guys. Have a good one. Thanks, Kevin. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye, Bye. everybody. Bye. Cheers.